Hi, I'm Jeff Hirsch. I'm here at the Traders Expo New York with Tom Sosnoff, the founder and co-CEO of Tasty Trade. And Tom, you told me you're going to break down the futures for me. Break them down. What, what, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I have a talk in about an hour, and it's um, it's a talk I like to do about just talking about some of the advantages of capital efficiency. You of know, the futures versus the underlying uh, versus the underlying. right. You know, we we have this approach, Jeff, where where we take we basically say that to be a successful investor, you have to be product indifferent because all the products are essentially the same. Whether you buy an S and P. Whether you trade you ten need, up, you need that built-in shockproof crap detector as well. That's right. <laughs> so, so everything is essentially everything is. You know, there's no difference between product A, B, or C nowadays. So, what is? So, so then why would somebody choose product A versus B versus C? And the answer is because there's more efficiency, more capital efficiency in certain products, and just people just don't understand that. So, my discussion on futures is all about capital efficiency. Can we can we give us an example about the capital efficiency sure. in, a, in a certain product, like say? QQQ or SPY or something sure. like that. Sure. Yeah. So, so um, one S and P E mini future. And listen, I I, I I run a broker. I own a brokerage firm that doesn't care what you trade. Okay. Right. But one S and P E mini future um, requires about six thousand dollars in capital overnight to to hold. And what it, it's a it's a um, um, it's it's about a hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of notional value. So for $140,000 of actual stock, you putting up about $6,000 to hold that overnight. The the perfect hedge or the perfect equivalent to that is 500 shares of spiders. 500 shares of spiders is $140,000. And 500 shares of spiders if you fully margin that is about $70,000. So the comparison is one future versus 10 times that much money to hold the same overnight position, which if you want to compare it to options is equivalent to 10 SPY at the money option so, contracts. So why are people generally uh, afraid or, or you know reserved about going into the future? Because, because, they're, so because they're uninformed. And, and because they're because they're unclear of the concept, and that's it. Because we're because we're undereducated. Because the large, small-time crooks we just talked about before. Yes, they want um, you to be in the SPY because they make more money off it. They not only make more money from loaning you the money for the margin, but they also the don't understand the products themselves, and they're worried that if you take and start managing the money yourself and use the additional capital for other strategies and stuff, that they'll make less money right. on their annuitized portion of your returns, which means just how they, you know, every dollar that a large financial conglomerate collects of your money, um, they they basically, what we like to say, they annuitize it over the next 20, 30, 40 years. We call it lifetime value. That's right, there you go. So just specifically with the, the, the futures product versus the, the equity product at the ETF, there's also efficiency with, with the spread in there as well. It's a tighter uh, market that you have when you trade the future from, from what I understand. The, the actual spread um, between the bid-ask differential in the future and the bid-ask differential on a liquid stock is exactly the same. The commission costs are the same and the actual bid-ask differential is the same. The difference is when you, and this is some of the stuff that I cover in my lecture, right. the difference is that the dividend risk is already embedded inside the future price and the cost to carry is already embedded inside the future price. So what most people don't understand about futures is that when you put up $6,000 to carry that position overnight, you're, the dividend's embedded in there and the cost to carry is embedded in there, but the cost to carry is embedded you're putting up six thousand. You're borrowing one hundred and thirty-four thousand, but you're borrowing it at two point whatever the overnight rate right. is. So at two point nine percent right now, as opposed to what the brokerage firm charges you of seven percent. So it's so it's a statistical, not it's not it's not an edge, but there's just an efficiency to doing it. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. Go see him speak. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.